Welcome to Empower Humans. Welcome again to the Empower Humans podcast. This is episode 162, my friends. Today, we are going to be talking about a very important topic about less is more, letting go of things. A lot of times we have things that hold us down and a uh, little baggage and all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk about uh, some things from a couple movies that I've seen, a couple of really important quotes. And most importantly, we're going to talk about a few tips, some of which I've used myself to you know do better in these areas. So before we jump into that, I just want to remind you as always, you are absolutely priceless. Uh, please don't forget that. I know it's easy to forget anything. You know, I've memorized things when I was a kid. It's funny. I remember uh, the spellings of certain big words. We learned the word sternocleidomastoid when I was in third grade, which is a muscle kind of in your neck and shoulder area. <laughs> 19 letters. I remember how to spell that. But sometimes we forget like the simplest, most important stuff. <laughs> like, for example, that you are priceless. So please don't get lost in the nonsense of this world, please just remember the riches are found in you. You're above all the you know so-called riches and monetary uh, systems and nonsense of this world. So that's the first and foremost foundational important principle that we all just keep in mind and remind ourselves of at all times. I hope if you haven't uh, yet started a, a pattern of affirmations or something to kind of keep your mind right and focused on the things that matter most to you, that uh, you do start that. It's been really a great thing for me and it's worked wonders in my life. And along with the You Are Priceless reminder, I want to also remind you, you are never alone. I know it's easy to feel alone. I felt alone many, many times in my life. But when that happens, uh, I want to let you know that it's a delusion. It's something that kind of we con ourselves into believing when you know, the world around us, our friends, family, neighbors, co-workers, whatever it is, there's tons of people. I believe very strongly, and I think I could support this with evidence, that uh, 99 plus percent of the people in this world are very, very good people. You know, there's all these things about this nation, that nation, and all that is is governments and regimes and stuff. All the people in most of those countries, I've known people from Iran, Afghanistan, all kinds of places, Russia, where we hear all these things over the decades. I digress, but please remember, you are not alone, and I know that there's great people around. Reach out, info at empowerhumans.com and empower101 on Instagram and on Twitter. And uh, I want to remind you real quick of our challenges. Study. You know the drill. Start studying. Keep studying. I've been listening to some awesome, awesome audiobooks. I just finished the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, I started listening to an audiobook about uh, Bruce Springsteen, read by the boss himself. Also, I actually had just started a book written by Barack Obama called A Promised Land. It's actually a nearly 30 hour audiobook. Uh, luckily, I speed up some of these books, but I've listened to all kinds of stuff. And it doesn't matter the political spectrum. I just like learning about all kinds of things and how people experienced things and got certain places and got beyond certain obstacles. That's all just amazing and fascinating to me. And I hope you find that as well. It'll it'll light a fire in you that maybe you didn't know existed. So if you're not studying, start studying. There's all kinds of ways, no excuses. I use free apps that work through the local library systems like Libby or Hoopla Digital. And uh, there's also Audible and all kinds of ways that we can get. I mean, we're in an information age. So again, no excuses. And the second challenge, my friends, make great moments. Uh, that's with loved ones. I keep saying that in a lot of ways, uh, making great moments, it's just about taking initiative, uh, maybe surprise somebody, just show love. Love is a verb, not just a noun. It just doesn't just exist, you know, like some building. It's it's something that's in constant motion. And so therefore, we have to express it through action. And so, you know, I've been doing that with my boys. I spend time with other people that matter in my life and uh, make the phone calls and talk to the people. I spent some time with my great aunt Eleanor recently, and I'm going to try to go to lunch with her again uh, here this week as well. Uh, she's 101 years old. I've talked to her, uh, talked about her before and to her on the podcast previously. These are just people in my world. So find those people and those things that matter most and make great moments there. And of course, the last challenge, let's keep doing this podcast together. I'm excited to get into this topic today. So without further ado, let's jump right in. This isn't an interview like uh, in normal cases with our podcast, but this is an important topic. So, you know, letting go is a very broad topic. We, we're letting go of things virtually every day. That could be things like, uh, you know, trash, you know, the, the waste product of some granola bar you ate or banana peel or other things, a pizza box <laughs> and also bodily waste and all kinds of stuff. I don't mean to be crass or anything, but we're letting go of things constantly. And so therefore we need to look around our environment and, and realize that uh, life is about flow. Oftentimes 
you know, they're bigger things uh, that may be holding us back in the form of, you know, some baggage emotionally or otherwise, or quite literally uh, in the sense of maybe being a hoarder, uh, just holding on to stuff. So there's all kinds of things that can hold us back and it, it can vary and fluctuate how that plays out in each of our individual lives. But I think it's important to kind of take a, a self-assessment, kind of a self-inventory right now and and kind of figure that out for ourselves. And I'm going to talk to you about some real important principles uh, regarding that as well. I'm sure most of us have used toilets in our lives. And, you know, the way the toilet functions is with the flow of water. And yet oftentimes, hopefully not too often, toilets get clogged. I, I have uh, some people I know who have kind of a habit of that. I'm not going to mention anyone by name or even their relationship to me. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes toilets get clogged. And what do we do? We go get a plunger. We go get some uh, drain, you know, Drano, something like that to really flush that out, so to speak. And uh, in some cases, it requires a little more drastic measures. You got to call a plumber or, you know, uh, in a recent case that I was involved with and no, I wasn't the culprit. Uh, somebody had to come and use what they call a snake to push things through and get this toilet flowing. Again, I'm not trying to be crass or vulgar or anything, but this is something we relate to usually most of us, I think, on a day-in and day-out basis. And in like manner, our lives need to continue to flow and certainly in a much higher plane than that of our all-important toilets. I have a question for you. Did you see the movie Up in the Air? It came out years ago, I think maybe around 2011. I didn't look this up, but uh, George Clooney is kind of the main character in this movie. And, you know, these are people who fly on airplanes constantly. That's why it's called Up in the Air. And uh, his character kind of gives a speech or, or, or monologue of sorts kind of related to this topic. And I want to share uh, this with you. It might take a few minutes to go through, but I'm going to read kind of word for word what he said. So here it goes. He said, how much does your life weigh? Imagine for a second that you're carrying a backpack. I want you to feel the straps on your shoulders. Feel them. Now, I want you to pack it with all the stuff that you have in your life. You start with the little things, the things on shelves and in drawers, the knickknacks, the collectibles. Feel the weight as that adds up. Then you start adding larger stuff, clothes, tabletop appliances, lamps, linens, your TV. The backpack should be getting pretty heavy now. And you go bigger, your couch, bed, your kitchen table. Stuff it all in there, your car, get it in there, your home, whether it's a studio apartment or a two-bedroom house. I want you to stuff it all in that backpack. Now, try to walk. It's kind of hard, isn't it? This is what we do to ourselves on a daily basis. We weigh ourselves down until we can't even move. And make no mistake, moving is living. Now I'm going to set the backpack on fire. What do you want to take out of it? What do you want to take out of it? Photos? Photos are for people who can't remember. Drink some ginkgo and let the photos burn. <laughs> this is what George Clooney said in the movie. In fact, let everything burn and imagine waking up tomorrow with nothing. It's kind of exhilarating, isn't it? Now, this is going to be a little difficult, so stay with me. You have a new backpack, only this time you want to fill it with people. Start with casual acquaintances, friends of friends, folks around the office, and then you move into the people that you trust with your most intimate secrets, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your parents, and finally your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, or your girlfriend. You get them into that backpack, and don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to light it on fire. Feel the weight of that bag. Make no mistake, your relationships are the heaviest components in your life. Do you feel the straps cutting into your shoulders? All those negotiations and arguments and secrets and compromises, you don't need to carry all that weight. Why don't you set that bag down? Some animals were meant to carry each other, to live symbiotically for a lifetime. Star-crossed lovers, monogamous swans, we are not those animals. The slower we move, the faster we die. And there's more to all this, by the way, that George said. There may be some good takeaways for me. There's some good takeaways in all this. Uh, one of the things he said is moving is living. And, uh, you know, when, at the end, the slower we move, the faster we die. And I think it's really important to kind of – going back to that toilet analogy, I know that was a fun one. But keeping that flow is keeping us moving. It's a flow. It's a movement of water. And so, therefore, we got to really be – uh, both honest and realistic with ourselves as to what this all means. And also when he talked about pictures, why do you need them when you have memories? I mean, this is what he said in his little speech in the movie. <laughs> so, and I, and when I saw that movie, by the way, I was like, interesting point. It doesn't mean I've gotten rid of all my pictures and certainly 
these days, most of us have a lot of them, you know, the ones that matter most uploaded to something like Facebook or something. So, hey, if something goes wrong or I end up homeless, Facebook hopefully still exists. But anyway, think about all that, our memories and the things that actually really matter and the the actual things that we really just possess already are really treasures in and of themselves, and especially these relationships. I don't know that I agree with all of it about, you know, setting that whole bag down. I think it's important to help and lift each other in our lives, but uh, be real honest with ourselves about how much of other people's lives, baggage, problems that we need to take on ourselves. So as he said, and trust me, I've been guilty of this. We weigh ourselves down such that we can't move. That can be stuff, you know, physical items. That can be the aftermath of some trauma or traumas we've experienced. And I'm not making light of any of it. But uh, trust me, we've all had some of these, uh, you know, things and we all have them now. I'm pretty sure of it. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, and if you've lived for any length of time, it can also be fears and carrying around other people's burdens, as we talked about, you know, as he kind of mentioned towards the end of this little speech. This is really about freeing ourselves from chains, many times self-imposed chains at that. I've said lately and, you know, been taught a lot that everything we do either empowers and frees us or disempowers and enslaves us. So we need to start looking at everything in our lives, literally everything through that lens. Now, speaking of movies, did you see the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? And I've talked about this and heard it from uh, some others recently as well about how at the end of the movie, he's going to get the uh, Holy Grail. You know, spoiler alert, <laughs> if you haven't seen it, it came out in the early 90s. So if you haven't seen it by now, uh, you know, pause this podcast and go watch and then come back. But at the end of the movie, uh, he, he comes to a part where he has to cross this basically uh, massive divide. This is almost like falling off a cliff. And it says that he has to take a leap of faith. And and so Indiana Jones, you know, in usual style and with a nervous look on Harrison Ford's face, he goes ahead and takes this leap of faith. And all of a sudden the bridge is there to cross this, uh, you know, ravine of sorts. That, <laughs> you have to see the movie if you haven't. Go look that part up about the leap of faith with Indiana Jones. Maybe those are your key words. <laughs> and as he gets across, uh, then he's able to, you know, make decisions and choose which cup was the uh, – Holy Grail and so on and so on. But he had to let go of his inhibitions, his fears to really take that leap of faith. And how could he take that leap if he was, you know, dragging some massive backpack like George Clooney was talking about? Now I'm mixing movies. but <laughs> These are important principles. I'm really just mixing principles expressed uh, in this context in the form of movies. Now, I want to take this a little bit of a step further. I've heard, and you may have heard this as well, that the enemy of great is good. And I learned that from various sources, including the book Good to Great. Uh, remember, therefore, to also get rid of otherwise good things that are also holding you down, that are also clogging the flow of our lives and, you know, what our real life purpose is. And, you know, I heard somebody recently say on a podcast, the reason most people fail is because they give up what they want most for what they want now. And I think that's worth some pondering individually for all of us. I invite you to do that. The reason most people fail is because they give up what they want most for what they want now. And I think that can be filtered through all kinds of lenses in our lives about the various things that we confront on a day-to-day -day basis and the baggages and things that we hold on to. And so I just want to kind of as we get ready to close, kind of go over some tips that have really helped me in this important topic. Number one. Ask yourself the meaning you've assigned to things in your world, you know, the physical, mental, emotional, relationship kind of areas of our lives, and follow your intuition. If it feels like a certain item is, is maybe holding you back, you know, fears, traumas, physical objects, whatever, add that to a list somewhere on paper or maybe on your phone or, you know, on your Google Drive or something. And just so that we're taking conscious action of real self-awareness. That's kind of the first step of a lot of things that we need to improve in our lives day to day, self-awareness. So, uh, But making it formalized in the form of something in writing I think is helpful to kind of understand, oh, this, this might be holding me back and clogging my toilet, <laughs> so to speak. And number two, if something needs healing, kind of acknowledge that the healing process is universally hard rather than thinking there's something quote unquote wrong with you. Uh, it can make it easier to just kind of get through the struggle by acknowledging that. Give yourself time and space to heal or mourn if that applies. Uh, so that might be part of some of this as well. I know I have some things like that. Uh, so figure that out for yourself, but be kind to yourself in that process, realizing that it is a process. And number three, seek closure by, by closing that door and then get rid of the reminders that may apply in your life that may 
be related to an ex-lover or a business failure or some other thing. A lot of times these are negative things and it could be like we said here recently in this podcast about the enemy of great is good. So get rid of some of those good things as hard as that may be and maybe even get rid of some of the reminders pertaining thereto as well, <laughs> my friends. And the fourth thing, if there are any kind of adverse feelings attached to something, there's an important process of kind of sitting with and understanding that feeling and its roots without judgment, okay? And sometimes just release the energy of that. And and I know for the sake of a podcast, I'm oversimplifying that process. Go study some of this online. Remember I said study. Study is an important part of what we do here. And just kind of verbally acknowledging it is helpful in terms of releasing that energy. You, you could just outwardly say clearly and concisely, I am anxious if you have something like that. And I'm not making light of any of it. I know people deal with all sorts of things, but face the thing and release some of that energy. And over time, uh, we can improve upon and, and better ourselves. This isn't kind of a one-stop shop where everything's done all at once. I believe we're all a work in progress until the day we die, whether we live to be over 100 like my great aunt Eleanor or whether we live to be some other age less than that. And I know we've all known people uh, of various degrees in that regard, but I digress. The fifth thing In the physical world, go through a closet, you know, find clothes or your garage or whatever, your living room. If if we're living in hoarder land, let's just be honest with ourselves. Some of us are and kind of go through that closet or that living room or that garage or whatever it is. Find clothes and things you don't use or need. Donate them. There's something that just feels great about doing that uh, in both the sense of helping somebody else and the sense of freeing yourself and flushing that out so to speak. So, uh, you know, be honest if you haven't worn something in a while or, you know, will you ever really use that that glue stick you've held on to since first grade <laughs> or whatever it is? You know, I'm, I'm being kind of silly, but it's all in the interest of expressing some points here. Get rid of it. There's no shame. And I myself need to improve in this regard as well. I'm not preaching, talking down to anybody. Uh, but these are some tips that have helped me and some tips that I've learned along the way with all the various things that I study, learn and try to progress in myself. Uh, the sixth thing of seven total, by the way, is, you know, related to the the realm of business in our lives. We've all maybe had jobs or, or maybe tried to start a business. Maybe there's business failures or missteps that uh, can likewise be let go of and find the lesson. That's really the important part of it. And there always is one. There's always a lesson. Build upon that experience. Reframe it as an important learning moment and move forward because life only moves forward. If we're dragging baggage, how are we going to move forward effectively, especially, you know, a backpack of the magnitude as George Clooney talks about. So, and the seventh and final thing, and, you know, the same is true really in our lives here. If there's some sort of loss or foreclosure outside of maybe a business thing that we talked about in the last one, uh, whether that's a divorce or like we said, maybe even job loss, that's in the business realm, but there's something extremely freeing and truly deciding to kind of move forward with life, let go and be real with yourself. And sometimes we need to let go of some perceived sense of control when all we can really truly control is ourselves the internal of ourselves. We can't control that much in the exterior. Um, There's things in our environment and in our world and in our homes that we can, but let's kind of resign ourselves to what we can control and maybe we can increase that influence in our lives as as we continue to learn and grow in advance. But let's, let's be honest and let go of things. I've had issues sometimes with control too. And a lot of times at the root of that, there's some form of insecurity that uh, this or that might happen or some fear of some perceived loss. So we're going to hold on tight to this or control this or that or that person um, as opposed to letting things be the way they're supposed to be and let these other areas and these other people flow the way they need to in their lives. So it's a constant kind of delicate, harmonious dance that we're trying to create for ourselves and for those uh, people and some things that, that maybe we do care about. So in closing, I want to kind of tell you a quote I heard, you know, a friend of mine, Ty Cohen, some of you may have heard of him. He has a thing called Kindle Cash Flow. I've met him and talked to him uh, here in, in Las Vegas and uh, great, great man from North Carolina. Uh, used to work at Walgreens and now he's making millions and millions of dollars uh, doing business things that he's doing. But one of the things he said, and I was watching a video that he made recently, he said, the biggest threat to your future is the past that you won't let go of. And I would take that a step further to include all the things we've talked about. That could be anything. And again, I'm not making light of any of it. I I promise that I honor and value and respect wherever you're coming from. But 
At the same time, we've got to be really honest with ourselves and really truly understand the, the value of less is more in our lives and letting go and letting things flow so that we can get, you know, I don't want to keep going back to the toilet analogy, but it's important and we all deal with them hopefully on a daily, daily basis. Let that toilet flow. <laughs> let let our lives flow more importantly. And as we do that, I promise that we're going to find more joy, peace, lasting, meaningful satisfaction and success in our lives in all areas. And we're all a work in progress. Don't be hard on yourself. And I know you can do it. I believe in you. I believe in humans and the ability to just grow, progress and learn. That's why I do this Empower Humans podcast. Uh, so until next time, my friends. You know, email with any questions, thoughts, insights, stories, whatever from your own life as it relates, especially this topic or any other, and any requests or suggestion box for the podcast, info at empowerhumans.com. And until next time, empower yourself, empower the world around you. Thank you. Thanks so much for listening to Empower Humans. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review this podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit empowerhumans.com. We'll catch you next time.